If you are studying geography, topo sheet is one of the most essential components and today we would look into what actually are topographical maps, how they were designed, why Survey of India came up with the first uh, topo sheets of India and how do we actually inter interpret and read a topo sheet. So let's begin with understanding what actually is a topo sheet or a topographical map. It is basically a base map or a very very standard map and based on this base map you are able to draw other maps onto it. So what kind of information it would include? It would include information pertaining to let's say relief, information pertaining to land, information pertaining to drainage and all basic information, settlement patterns, uh, the major relief patterns. So all those would be the part of the base map. Now with this base map there is a possibility to draw other maps. How? Uh, answer is very very simple. Let's say I have the topo sheet with the areas where settlements are there. Now if I want to have a new railway line that is to be constructed or a new uh, roadway that has to be constructed, I need to know the existing patterns of dwelling. I, I won't create a railway line into a forest area where there is no human habitation. So definitely if I am trying to create anything new I need to have a base map and these topographical map help us with this base map. So they are actually a general purpose map and they represent a small area. Since they represent a small area they are called as large scale maps. So the scale is large but the area represented is a small part of a district, part of a city is represented in one topo sheet and that makes it much more detailed, much more finer, much more comprehensive in terms of the information that is there. The next important thing that we need to understand is in India, the topographical maps come under two series. One is the India and the adjacent countries and the next is the international map series of the world. Now, India and the adjacent country series was prepared by Survey of India initially until the coming of the Delhi Survey Conference in 1937. So, till then, Survey of India was liable for preparing all the India and adjacent countries. However, Thereafter, the preparation of the adjacent area was abandoned and Survey of India was confined to preparing only the maps of India. Now, what was the, uh, the criteria under which the maps were made? So, it was 1 is to 10 lakh. So, that was the scale that was used. 1 is to 2.5 lakhs and 1 is to 50,000. So, those are the common maps that have been seen with the topographical maps. Now again, the latitudinal and the longitudinal coverage vary. So each section of India, we'll see in the next map how it is done. So let's say this is India. Each section is divided into a grid of 4 degrees by 4 degrees. And then later on, we again divide this further into 1 degree by 1 degree. So 4, 4 sections of 1 degree each. That means what we are trying to do is, we are trying to move into further finer details of the topo sheet and a specific location within a specific state, a specific district. We are trying to focus on a specific region. The next is the international map series of the world. Now these are the standardized maps which are made for the entire world and they are on the scale of 1 is to 10 lakh and 1 is to 2.5 lakh only. So only those two maps, uh, those two scales are used for creating such maps. Now these maps are interesting because they provide us with finer detail. So as you can see this is an actual topo sheet from Survey of India. Now there are certain things that are written on it. What are those? We would understand those in a very very simple format. So first thing that we need to understand is here you have the state. Here is the district that it is. If it is a restricted region it would be marked as restricted. Then we have the legend that is there on the lower end. So legend would be there on two of the sides. So both sides of the topo sheet would have the uh, legend. This would be the marking on the topo sheet. This would say exactly which topo sheet element is being used within the 
whole of the India will understand this in a while as we move forward. Then we have the scale and this is a kind of diagrammatic representation of the actual area that would be covered in the topo sheet. So this area actually represents the Tehri Galwal district of uh, then Uttar Pradesh, now Uttarakhand. Okay. Now what we need to understand is the interesting facts about Survey of India. So Survey of India is India's central engineering agency which is in charge of all the mapping and the surveying that is done. This is one of the ancient and the oldest engineering departments of the government of India which was held to be established by uh, British India or the East India Company during that time. Now under this there were uh, William Lambent, Lambenton and George Everest. So these two people started with a great triangulation survey. Now this great triangulation survey was the basis for most of the topo sheets. Some of the major accomplishment was creating a triangulation survey even for Mount Everest, K2, the major mountain ranges, Kanchanjunga and demarcating the British territories during that time. Now, uh, this project was brought under the crown after 1857 and since then it has been working. So, initially established in 1767, Survey of India has been working since then. Now, as we said, this is a zoom a uh, zoom view of the lower and the upper uh, sections of the topo sheet to help you further understand. So uh, just one thing that we missed here is the, long, the longitudes that are given, uh, the latitudes and the longitudes that are again drawn here. So we have the grid which shows the longitudes and the latitudes here. Now coming on to the detailed uh, map here. So this is the topo sheet number that is there. Then you have the state. If it is restricted, it would be mentioned as restricted. The year in which it was surveyed, the districts that it would be covering and a map of a district, the administrative index map that would be given here. Then you would have the legend on both the side, the sheet number. So it is 53J16. We would understand this in a while. And within the index of the sheet, here is 53J16 that has been given. And then we have the scale. So this is 1 as to 50,000 scale on which this topo sheet is made. Now under the national map policy, we have two types of maps that are there. The two series of maps, first is the open series of map and the second is the defense series of map. Open series of maps are those which are unrestricted and allowed to the public. Uh, they are based on the UTM projection uh, which is based on the WGS84 uh, datum. And then we also have the defense maps which are based on uh, certain formulated guidelines and uh, they are basically focusing on specific defense needs and defense uh, requirements. So as we said this was the sheet number 53. So 53 J16 is the region that would be covered. So this is the sheet number 53. This is divided further into A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So you would have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K and so on. Okay. So this sheet would be further subdivided. Now each of the region where it falls is given here. So let's say 55 number falls here. So this is permanent. Every time we would be uh, permanent in the sense uh, this region of Madhya Pradesh would be Madhya Pradesh and Northern uh, Maharashtra would be uh, sheet number 55 always. So whenever you are referring to the topo sheet, you would have to refer to the topo sheet series 55. Then based on the further region that you want to understand you would have to go into the details of a b c d and so on and so forth now what would happen this 55 is divided into 16 grids of a b c d and then we have a further subdivision of this d let's say into another 16 sections so it's 4 by 4 then 1 by 1 and then 15 by 15 seconds that would be seen and therefore you have a pretty uh, detailed analysis of each of the regions within the topo sheet that is seen. Now some of the important terms that we must be familiar with. First is the RF which is the representative fraction which we have already covered.
covered in our previous classes it is nothing but the map distance to the actual ground distance the ratio of that is the representative fraction as we said 1 is to 50,000 it's basically a translation of the scale then we have contours contours are the lines that join places of equal height so let's say this is a ground here it is 100 centimeter high 100 centimeter high 100 centimeter high so i create three points and all these three are 100 centimeters so i join all these three now near to it it is 200 200 and 200 so i draw another line joining these two these three points which are 200 so let's say there are three points or four points on the ground which are of the elevation 100 meters so i join these four points then what would happen is there is another point location which is uh, let's say less uh, of less height okay so i join these two locations then there is another few points that are of further different location i join them so all of those would be the points of equal height so contour simply means i join the places of equal height now contour interval is a fixed distance between the two contours so let's say if i draw first contour of 100 my next contour can be 200 my next contour can be 300 so i am creating a fixed interval and that is 100 so i keep a interval of 100 from 100 to 200 200 to 300 300 to 400 and so on then we also have triangulation marks which are small uh, triangular marks to represent a specific point and then we also have another important term which is index contour index contour is an important contour which is made bold or uh, darker to emphasize so let's say i have contours that are coming from 100 okay and i keep drawing the circles and there is another circle here now what would happen is i want to say this line of 200 is a very important line so rather than keeping it light i make it a little bold and therefore this line becomes a little bold or thicker and this gives me the index contour so my index contour here would be 200 okay so this is how we understand the index contours then uh, we do have jungles deserts forests uh, rivers settlements that are explained under the map and then various methods of relief representation are used for example if roads are there if it is metal then this is the sign that is used if it is unmetal then it is broken okay and then if it is having a metal road with a distance marker a milestone then 20 is written similarly streams are drawn with a bed that is given we have contours and reliefs that are cliffs that are explained huts that are explained so huts are simple squares then we have the temples the churches the mosque that are explained uh, similarly mines are explained so all these are some of the conventional symbols that are used in the topo sheets to represent the different areas so all these are the things that are represented now settlements could be of various types i can have settlements in rural areas or urban areas the rural settlements would be either compact they would be scattered linear or circular the settlements in the urban area could be on a crossroad junction so again if let's say there is a crossroad that, that is going i would have settlements that would be on all the sides of the crossroads so this would be the settlement pattern there could be another scenario where numerous roads are crossing and i have settlements in each of these so i would say this is let's say a fan shaped settlement there could be a radial settlement that could be there and all these settlements are governed by what they are governed by definitely the availability of water the availability of food the relief that is there the terrain that is there if it is too hilly to uh, then definitely uh, it won't be a good place for a person to live the habitation would definitely be difficult and numerous population habitation won't be seen so all those things are taken into consideration while we talk about uh, the settlement and relief depiction now the next comes a very interesting topic and this is nothing but contours what are contours contours are nothing but they are imaginary lines as we said and these are the lines that join places of equal height but there is some interesting facts about 
contour as we said they join the places of equal height but with the height what they are trying to explain is the slope how do we understand that if the contours are too close to one another that means a steep shape would be seen however if the contours are far apart there would be a less steeper shape or a gentler slope that would be seen sometimes two or more contours merge one another we'll understand all these examples as we move forward case by case so sometimes the two contours merge like this they cannot intersect that is another very important thing okay but they can merge when they merge there is a cliff phenomena that is seen now this cliff phenomena is either as a cliff or it could be a case where there is a steep gradient and a waterfall so all of those are examples then again as we said contour there is a index contour which is one of the major contours which is made bold there is a fixed contour interval the place on which we are explaining the landforms by contour we say this is a contour map we do not say this is a, a, a normal topographical map so this makes the study very very interesting now uh, as we said the spacing is a very important indicator of the slope of the region now how actually the contours are drawn so what are the steps let's say i have drawn these contour lines so this is 600 500 400 line uh, 300 lines 200 line and 100 meters height that i have drawn on a contour sheet uh, now what i do is how do i actually represent this two dimensional thing that i have drawn on a sheet of paper to the actual world so what we do is we draw a imaginary line ab cutting the contours that are there so all these are the contours cutting that i draw a imaginary line and here i draw a vertical uh, gradient here i mention 100 to 600 what has been given in the contour map so i draw 100 here 200 300 and so on till 600 so the 100 contour would fall on the point of 100 the 600 contour would fall on the point of 600 and so on for the remaining uh, contours and then i join all these points and i get a slope this is an example of a gentle slope that is there so this is an example of a gentle slope this is an example of a steep slope now what are the common questions that are there you might be given a contour map which is this i would hide this region so this would be the section that won't be given to you you would be exposed to only this region and you would be asked what is the actual relief that would be seen on the ground if this is the case so you would have to draw this you would have to extend this or draw a cross section of this i would say to create a 3d impact or a 3d view and then you would understand this is an example of gentle slope this is an example of a steep slope this time you are drawing it as you move on you practice more and more simply by visual visualization you can say this is a gentle slope this is a steep slope we would be covering few more examples in a while but this is the basic idea so we have understood how we draw this i repeat again whatever contour lines are given so let's say i draw another example of just two cases this is 100 and 200 i cut this point okay i draw a line i mark 100 i mark 200 now what i do is i follow the points from 100 to the point of 100 from 100 to 100 and the between line is 200 so i put this at 200 and put this is 200 now what i do is i join these points and this is a simple mountain that would be seen a simple small hill that would be seen so that is how we actually draw a cross section for the contours the next is another example so this is an example of concave slope versus a convex slope so this is an example of convex slope this is an example of concave slope and you can see how the contours run like the initial contours are far off here okay at the height of 100 200 they are far off but in the case of convex they are closer at lower heights and they are far off at higher elevation they are far at higher elevation however they are closer 
at higher elevation so that's the difference between a concave and a convex slope contours that are seen similarly if we take an example of a mountain versus a plateau as we could see the points of the highest depth would be far off and therefore this would create a flat line and this would be an example of plateau versus a mountain where the two points would be very very close by so this is an example of mountain this is an example of plateau that is there and as we saw the same way we'll drop the lines and if you just visualize this and if you just simply visualize this in long run if the values are increasing towards the center and the center one is very very far away with symmetrical dimensions we would easily say this is a plateau in contrast if the center region is closer by and the values are increasing we would say this would represent as a mountain the next is an example for a v-shaped valley versus a u-shaped valley under the u-shaped valley and v-shaped valley what would happen as you move inside the height of the contours would decrease so far the cases we were taking the height of the contour was increasing as we were moving inside because we were creating hills plateaus slopes so in those cases the height was relatively increasing but in this case when we are creating a valley uh, the height has to decrease as we go towards the inner of the contour so as we move inside what would happen the height would decline if the height is declining and the lines are getting close to each other we say this is an example example of a v shaped valley if the innermost lines are far apart similar to what we have seen in plateau but a reverse trend for the values that are seen we give this a example of a u shaped valley now this is further in interesting a, a gorge versus a spur now gorge would be further deeper as we saw a v shaped valley it is relatively less deep as we move into gorge it is further more deep and these lines are very very close by so the last the contours which are towards the innermost side of a v-shaped valley if they are very very close this would turn into a gorge and similarly we have a spur which is simply a tongue of a land we could say they, that projects from higher ground into a lower ground and this is what is known as a spur a very simple example has been quoted here the next is very very interesting this is an example of a waterfall versus a cliff now in both these cases we would see few of the contours meet at a point and since they are meeting it gives a vertical elevation here again in the case of waterfall they are meeting at a point two three of the contours 1500 1600 and 1700 contours different contours of different height cannot intersect i cannot say this is 1500 contour and this is 1600 contour that is not possible but they can meet at a point since they would meet at a point the landform depicted would be vertical because all of those three would fall at the same point and therefore on a vertical thing i would give a on a three dimensional thing it would be a vertical impact that would be explained and this is what is an example for a cliff and a waterfall so as we said if we are talking about merging contours definitely it is something where the gradient changes drastically waterfall cliff are good of the are some of the good examples rapids could be another example for the same so interpretation of the uh, contour sheets the topo sheets is very very important what all we can infer from a topo sheet so as we saw the topo sheet that was given from the tehri garwal region if we come back to that again we can see there is a marginal information that means it talks about the latitude the longitude the exact location where it is it talks about uh, the degrees the minutes the scale so that's a very basic information we call it as marginal information the next is the relief and the drainage it talks about the rivers flowing through the region it talks about the hills the plateaus the plains the land use which talks about vegetation the pattern of agriculture the services that are available means of transport and communication is again very very important it is shown uh, through the rail line through the roadways 
that is there and then there are human settlements so whether it is a densely populated area a less densely populated area or uh, what kind of settlement it is a urban settlement versus a, a rural settlement so all those interpretations can be drawn from a topo sheet now on the top of the topo sheet we also use the satellite imageries to update the data and bring in live information into detail now what is the process through which we uh, the procedure for interpretation so as we saw each of the topo sheet has the index number it talks about the location the area so we saw this was from the region 53 so 53 is the actual region on the map from where you have the topo sheet so it talks about the exact location then there is a scale the scale gives us an idea how detailed picture of a region we are trying to bring the contour interval talks about the general landform uh, the interval also varies with the surveying and the methods of surveying used we also try to superimpose and find certain relations with topo sheets for example let's say there is a river growing and across the river if i see lots of settlements then it makes clear that the settlements are made closer to where closer to the water source similarly if there is a transport network that is going and there are numerous huts and settlements that are there we can make an analysis that uh, settlements are close to the transport chain so what we are trying to do is we are trying to find a relation and superimpose various features with one another also the distributional patterns of each of the fe features is explained through this interpretation process so this was a very basic understanding about topo sheets how do we actually use topo sheets what are the ingredients or the basic ideas of a topo sheet and then we talk about contours how contours are drawn contours are usually a very basic very important question for not only your practicals but for your other exams as well you have various kind of contours that are drawn simply and you are asked what would be the final outcome so unless and until you know the practicals you won't be able to do it you won't be able to solve it and therefore knowing practicals is a essential part of any subject which has practicals with it we would be covering many more interesting lectures for you stay tuned have a wonderful day